Hello, I hope that you're having a great day. Welcome to another session for Foundations of Education. And we are now in your final term. And for our first lesson, we will be talking about the legal foundations of education. More specifically, the Philippine educational system, its legal basis, administrative organization, and structure. So for today, you will know how did it ended with Department of Education, okay? What were the things that happened before? What happened in the history? Why there was an educational system in our country? So let's start with the time before the colonizers occupied our country. So when we talk about the colonizers, we have the Spaniards, the Americans, and the Japanese. So we will talk about what is the system of education before they came. So we have now the pre-Hispanic period. So when we talk about the pre-Hispanic period, always bear in mind that this is an education for survival and conformity. Ibig sabihin, the children were provided with vocational training because the goal of this education is for them to acquire the skills needed to survive. Okay? And education during that time is informal, unstructured, and devoid of methods. So, wala pa tayong sinusunod na system, wala pa tayong curriculum during that time, wala pang books, wala pa tayong formal teachers, wala pang schools. That was during the time of the pre-Hispanic period. But when the Spaniards came, we, uh, we entered the Spanish period, the education was religion-oriented. So how, how come that it was religious-oriented? Because remember, diba, the goal of the Spaniards are the three Gs. We have the God, gold, and glory. And when we talk about the God, that is their goal to Christianize our country. Therefore, in schools during the Spanish period, they focused on Christianism. Okay? They focused on spreading Christian Christianity. So during that time, only the rich men can afford to send their kids or their children to school. Therefore, there happened the Educational Decree of 1863. What is this Educational Decree? So, Educational Decree of 1863, this led to the establishment of primary schools for boys and girls in each town. So, for them to easily spread Christianity, they established primary schools for boys and girls in each town under the supervision of the Jesuits. Okay, so during the Spanish period, that happened. So there was, or there were, primary schools already in each town. But when the Americans came, they uh, closed the schools maintained by the Spaniards. But it was also reopened on August 29, 1898. Who reopened it? It's the Secretary of Interior. O, kasi usong-uso lahat noon yung mga departments or yung mga secretaries. So we have the Secretary of Interior ordered for the reopening of these schools. But what happened during that time? They offered free and compulsory elementary education. So hindi sa lahat ng levels libre. Okay? It's only the elementary education. Hindi lang siya libre but compulsory. So, lahat ng mga bata noon ay required to enroll or to study in the elementary level. So, we also have the Sherman Commission. Anong ginawa ng Sherman Commission? They established an adequate secularized and free public school system. Because during the Spanish, di ba, it's a religion-oriented school. But, during the Americans, they made a secularized and free public school system. Ayan. So, hindi siya nag-focus na sa Christianity. And, 
highly centralized public school system was also installed in 1901. And who did that? The Philippine Commission by virtue of Act Number 74. Ayan, nagkaroon ng development. Hindi na lamang free and compulsory education. Hindi na lang yung mga primary schools for boys and girls in each town. Nagkaroon tayo ng highly centralized public school system. Ayan. So, nagkaroon ng uh, more connections or naging centralized na, naging isa na yung sinusunod na mga public schools during that time. And because of the centralization of public schools, ayan, nagkaroon ng shortage of teachers. And what did the Secretary of Public Instruction do? Ayan, the Secretary of Public Instruction brought 600 teachers from the United States. Again, teachers from the United States. At ang tawag natin sa mga teachers na yon, sa 600 teachers na yon, are the Thomasites. Okay? They were the uh, American teachers. Oh, Thomasites ang tawag natin doon. 600 sila ha. Don't forget about that. So, nagkaroon tayo ng Reorganization Act of 1916 provided for the Filipinization of all department secretaries except the Secretary of Public Instruction. So, when we talk about Filipinization, nagkaroon na din ng role ang mga Filipinos to become department secretaries. Except lamang kay Secretary of Public Instruction. Now, after the Americans, there came the Japanese. Ano nangyari sa Japanese? So, in the Japanese period, there are educational policies that makikita natin sa military order number two in 1942. And what happened during this time? Ayan, the Philippine Executive Commission established the Commission of Education, Health, and Public Welfare. So hindi na siya um, pub, hindi na siya secretary of public instruction. So, hindi na public instruction ang tawag. We have the Commission of Education, Health, and Public Welfare. And schools were reopened in June 1942. Ano naman ang nangyari during uh, October 14, 1943? The Japanese-sponsored republic under the Laurel administration created the Ministry of Education. So, Ministry of Education na naman ang tawag. The teaching of Tagalog, Philippine history, and character education was reserved for the Filipinos. Ayan, kasi during the Americans, um, English, di ba? English na yung tinutulot nila, of course. Pero during the Japanese, binalik nila or mas um, pinatibay pa nila ang pagtuturo ng Tagalog, Philippine history, and character education. And the main focus of the Japanese education is the love for work and dignity of labor. So, napaka-hilig nila sa work and dignity of labor. At sila din yung nanguna noon for the technical vocational skills. Okay? During the Japanese period yon. So, after the Japanese period, we have the post-Japanese period, yung we have now the independence. In 1947, the Department of Instruction was changed to Department of Education. So, nagkaroon ng Department of Education na during the time of, on, in 1947, by virtue of Executive Order Number 94. Ayan, dahil sa Executive Order Number 94, tinawag na Department of Education. But, in 1972, pinalitan na naman nila naging Department of Education and Culture by virtue of Proclamation 1081 and pinalitan ulit naging Ministry of Education and Culture in 1978 by virtue of PD number 1397. So, Presidential Decree number 1397. So, in this one, 13 regional offices were created and major organizational changes were implemented in the educational system. So, nagkaroon na tayo ng mga regional offices. Diba? After the centralization, iisa lamang, nagkaroon ng mga regional offices siguro para hindi rin masyadong mahirap 
to communicate. That's why they established 13 regional offices. Oo. Nagkaroon kasi tayo, di ba, nagkaroon na ng iba't ibang regions ang ating country. So, the Educational Act of 1982 naman, it created the Ministry of Education, Culture, and Sports, MEX. So, for short, is MEX, which later become the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports. So, DEX na yan. So, magkakasama noon yung Education, Culture, and Sports. That was in 1987 by virtue of Executive Order Number 11. Ayan. Yung, nung MEX pa siya, Educational Act of 1982. Pero, ginawang DEX by virtue of Executive Order Number 11 noong 1987. So, five years after naging DEX na siya. From MEX to DEX. Now, what happened next? In 1994, Commission on Higher Education was created for tertiary degree programs. Ayan. So, in 1994, doon na nagsimula na may mga degree programs. And, Technical Educational and Skills Development Authority for those naman na non-degree and technical vocational programs. So, in August 2001 naman, nagkaroon ng Republic Act 9155, otherwise called the Governance of Basic Education Act that was passed transforming the name of DEX to Department of Education. Ayan, bumalik ulit tayo sa Department of Education. Ihiniwalay na nila yung culture and sports. That was because of the Republic Act 9155. O, pagbabalik ni... DepEd or Department of Education and redefining the role of field offices. Kaya nagkaroon na tayo ng regional offices, division offices, district offices, and yung mga schools natin. Okay, that's why mayroon tayong tinatawag na Schools Division of Ilocos Norte, Schools Division of Lawag City, Schools Division of Batak City. Oo, dito sa ating province, di ba? Ayan. And yan, may mga district offices din, lalong-lalo na sa mga malalaking divisions, merong uh, district 1, ayan, meron din mga district 2. Okay, there are different district offices, and of course, yung mga schools natin. Oo. Lahat ng schools, dyan sila kabilang. Okay? So, lahat ng yon are under Department of Education. So, here is the summary of how it changed from uh, the Superior Commission of Primary Instruction hanggang sa naging Department of Education siya. Ayan. So, 1863, ayan, ito pa yung tawag sa kanya, Superior Commission of Primary Instruction. Tapos, ayan, ang head noon ay chairman pa lamang, and that is... Um, the Educational Decree of 1863. So, tingnan ninyo sa module, makikita ninyo ito. This is a summary of all the things that we have discussed na nasa taas. Ayan. So, tingnan nyo na lang sa inyong mga modules. Kasi na-discuss na, na ko na siya, itong table na ito lang is a summary of how it changed from the Superior Commission of Primary Instruction Hanggang sa naging public instruction, naging education, health, and public welfare, naging Department of Education, tapos napalitan ng culture, tapos naging culture and sports, then bumalik ulit siya sa Department of Education. So, those are the things that you have to know about the Philippine educational system. Yun yung nangyari. Kaya ngayon, we have the Department of Education. So, I hope that you learned something for this lesson and please do review the things that we have discussed for your final examination. Until next time, see you on the next lecture.